You know how your parents are always telling you, back in my day, things were a lot better. They'll say things like they didn't need the internet or a cell phone to survive. What they're not telling you is that they did have classic video game systems like Atari and the Super Nintendo Entertainment System, so it couldn't have been all that bad. And the games from their era verge on epic in both difficulty and entertainment, which is why they required game cheats to beat them. If you're a sucker for hard mode gameplay and you like to talk about classic games like it's still 1984, well, we're here to give you a helping hand to beat those insanely difficult bosses and all we ask in return is for you to like us or subscribe to us, whatever the kids are doing these days. Castlevania Easy Grim Reaper Kill Castlevania, released by Konami in 1986, was one of the first of its kind as a gothic-style fantasy platformer that requires you to go through levels that gradually intensified in difficulty. You took on the role of Simon Belmont, a descendant of the Belmont clan, a family of vampire hunters that easily put Buffy the Vampire Slayer to shame. Belmont had to travel to Dracula's demonic castle in Castlevania, where he would battle horrific creatures to eventually destroy both Dracula and the castle. His main weapon was a whip called Vampire Killer. Yeah, we know it's a bit of a cliche name, but at least he wasn't using garlic and steaks. We have to give the developers props for being inventive with the weapon choice. Arguably, one of the most difficult bosses of the game was the Grim Reaper. In the fifth level, when you come across the Grim Reaper, there's an easy way to defeat him. You'll need to find the holy water within the level, which will be a necessity. During your battle with Death himself, stay on top of one of the raised platforms. As the Grim Reaper floats on up to you, shoot him continuously with the holy water. You should be able to defeat him within a few seconds before his scythe can do any damage at all. Dark Souls – Soul Farming Dark Souls quickly became a popular action role-playing game choice because it gave players an element of exploration that was previously unheard of. Players were encouraged to be cautious and learn from their mistakes by using the open world to their advantage. And trust me, there were plenty of mistakes to be made in a game like Dark Souls. One of the most important aspects of the game was soul farming. In Dark Root Garden, there was a hidden wall behind a bonfire. There, you would find a locked door sealed by the Astora's Crest. This door led you through a shortcut to Sith, one of the bosses of the game. Game. Before you reach the boss, you would come across a mage, a semi-invisible knight, a rogue, and an archer. The key here would be to shoot the mage but not kill him so you can lead him back to the bonfire. Once at the bonfire, you would need to check if the knight had followed. If the coast is clear, you would kill the mage and your reward would be 2,000 souls. You could continue this process until you had received the desired amount of souls. Although there were plenty of soul farming areas, this became a popular and easy go-to for some instant gratification. Ninja Gaiden 2 – Quick Dual Dragon Bosses Takedown Just talking about Ninja Gaiden 2 gives us flashbacks that we'd prefer to never discuss. This fast-paced action-adventure game was as intense as it was brutal. If you thought that Ninja Gaiden was full of gore and graphic violence, it paled in comparison to the sequel title, Ninja Gaiden 2. In this game, Ryu, the main protagonist, uses his signature dragon sword in combat to dismember his enemies, which would weaken or slow them down. There were, of course, some enemies that were more difficult to defeat than others. We're talking about the heated battle between the Double Dragons boss in case you were wondering. Once you reach the mountain peak of Chapter 9, you discover that your journey wasn't over yet, but there was a way to make the Double Dragon boss fight an easy win. You would need to make sure to max out the level for the Shadow of the Piercing Void move. As the first dragon charges up a fireball, you would have to manually aim at the chest, which would take more than half its health in just one shot. The dragons could be killed in about four shots total, but you would need to have plenty of healing items at the ready because those fireballs are tricky to dodge when you have to manually aim aim at moving targets. Dwarf Fortress – Altering the Game If you've never heard of Dwarf Fortress, it's probably for the best. The game has somehow managed to acquire quite the online community and cult following even though their unofficial motto is, losing is fun. To each their own, we suppose. There's no way to win this game, no matter how successful or skilled you are at it, since every fortress is usually destroyed somehow. Dwarf Fortress is a text-based graphics and open-ended game with no main objective. The player generates worlds with continents, oceans, and histories and chooses a fortress where they'll combat outside threats like goblin invasion. Since the game is text-based, there are plenty of cheats to use to make it more enjoyable. It's all going to be destroyed anyway, so why not have some fun while you're at it? In order to change the game, you would need to do a raw edit by opening creature underscore standard dot text where you would locate the dwarven stats. You would delete the stats to replace them with a new set like no underscore eat, no underscore sleep, or no underscore drink. You would also have to make sure that everything is capitalized. This would mean that your dwarves were independent and you would never have to care for them again. A useful cheat for a game that has no objective, other than having fun. 
The bizarre adventures of Woodruff and the Schnibble solve the most difficult puzzle. If you like out of this world games, then the bizarre adventures of Woodruff and the Schnibble would be right up your alley. There's over 40 locations to explore in an open world puzzle game that makes you feel like you've left the sanity of your own planet. These puzzles take a lot of effort to solve, but with some trial and error, it can and will be done. There's one puzzle that often gets the best of players referred to as the Stone Puzzle. Once you meet the man in the virtual trip tower, he will give you a Bluxter nut after you give him a firm stone. You'll have to go to the Big Wig area or the administration area to dial the weather report code on your Tobozon. The Tobozon is another made-up word by Woodruff that means the video phone. Dial the code a few times until the guy tells you a meteorite will fall in your area. Don't forget to use the Meteozon watch. You'll need to bring the Buckster nut back to this area in order to crush it. You'll stick it in the tar barrel to prevent it from rolling. You'll also put it on the cross and then use the Meteozon watch to call down the meteorite. If you like games with dark humor and absurd dialogue, then you'll quickly fall in love with Woodruff. Super Meat Boy Defeat Boss 4 Easily if you didn't see references between Super Meat Boy and Super Mario Brothers, you must have been asleep during its release. Even the initials replicate each other. The gameplay of Super Meat Boy plays much the same way as Super Mario Brothers, since it's entirely platform-based where you have two options, running and jumping, and also saving damsels in distress by the name of Bandage Girl, who also always seems to be moving to different castles. This game is one of the most difficult that we've ever experienced. It also enjoys showing you all of your failures with the statistics menu to keep track of each death. If you play Super Meat Boy on the PC, well, you're in luck because there's a trick to beat the fourth boss. Before the fourth boss does an attack animation, just pause and go to the character select screen. You'll see a message pop up stating you can't change your character. Just exit the screen like nothing happened and Super Meat Boy will become invincible to Little Horn's attack. You'll have to repeat this for every attack until you've won, but it's a great loophole to make a difficult boss an easy win. Shadow of the Beast 2 – Unlimited Energy If torturing yourself to beat a video game is your idea of fun, then boy do we have a game for you. Shadow of the Beast 2 is arguably one of the most difficult games ever created. Seriously, if you can turn back now, please do so because this game is known for its immense difficulty. Many points in the game require you to take quite a bit of damage, and if you have played the game, you know there are limited health power-ups. This is also paired with the realization that you have one life and you better use it wisely because there are no do-overs. We're really not sure what the developers were thinking here, but luckily they gave us an easy out in the form of an unlimited energy cheat code. If you're playing on the Genesis, there is no escape to the insane difficulty of this game. But if you're lucky enough to have an Amiga personal computer, then you're in luck. Once the game begins, you'll come across a pygmy and need to walk right. Press A and type 10 pints into the question mode and you will be rewarded with unlimited energy. Although we're still not certain if you made a deal with the devil for that cheat. You never know with a game like Shadow of the Beast. I Wanna Be The Guy, The Movie, The Game, Boss Rush Mode. Do you like insanely difficult platformers that will have your nails ground to bits by the end of gameplay? I Wanna Be The Guy, The Movie, The Game, or IWBTG, as we will refer to it from now on, will give you all of that and more. In IWBTG, you play the simple character of the kid who has your usual moves, up, down, left, and right. That's all you have to worry about. And yes, we're also concerned that the kid looks like a bad time on MS Paint, but that's aside from the point. All the kid wants to do is beat the game to be the guy. We don't really know which guy, but we do know that he wants to be the guy. It's less a nod to the classic games we loved and more a blatant act of plagiarism. If you could ignore that though, you're about to have a wicked good time trying to beat one of the hardest platformers in existence. But we have a trick up our sleeve to beat those pesky bosses. All you need to do is hold B on your keyboard while you also select the play game option in your selection menu. This will allow you to skip straight to boss rush mode, a little trick that will go a long way. Smash TV Super Speed If you had the pleasure of playing Smash TV as an arcade classic, well, let us apologize to you because we're certain you spent most of your allowance on it. The game was known for eating quarters right out of your pocket, but it was well worth it, we're sure. Smash TV came out for the Xbox 360 in 2005 via the Xbox Live Arcade, and fans of the classic game couldn't be more excited. The ability to view the scoreboard, play online, and unlock achievements gave Smash TV that extra something that it had been missing from the original. The worst part of the game was that every time you could continued, your total score would be deducted and multiplied by the amount you had to continue. It was basically like starting over if you had any hopes of being a top scorer on the high score board. There was a cheat to blaze past all the difficult levels and gain the respect of your fellow arcade dwellers. If you were playing with a classic dual joystick machine, you would have to go to the player selection screen and then press left, right, left, up, R, and R to gain some instant speed. Even Superman couldn't catch up to you with this intense cheat that made speedrunners of today's games look sad in comparison. 
Ghosts and Goblins, Final Boss Password. The mere mention of the words Ghosts and Goblins sends us bolting from the room in search of nearby cover. The game gave us nightmares that we'd prefer to forget with its insane difficulty and dark humor that was just as memorable. And just when we forgot about the ridiculous jumps to moving platforms and dive bombing devil men, Capcom gives us a re-release of the game. We're sure you ran to the stores like you forgot it was your wedding anniversary and had to at least get a card to make up for it. But this, this game was something different because it had a certain power over you. This time, you were going to beat it. If you were lucky enough to get to play this game on the Game Boy Color, well, first of all, kudos to you, because there is no other way to play this game. But you also get the added bonus of skipping all the horrendous stuff to go straight to the final boss. That's right, there was a way to skip all of it with this code. Simply type in N8C squiggly bracket heart squiggly bracket K40N. If we would have known about this sooner, then we probably would have saved countless hours of misery and there would be less broken objects in our house. What were some video game cheats that helped you remain sane. Were there any extremely difficult games that you would recommend people to stay away from? Feel free to tell us about them in the comments below. Thanks for watching and we hope you'll consider subscribing to our channel for even more boss fights and cheat codes in your life. Have a good one.